Are YouTubers getting rich promoting cheap guitars? Welcome back to the channel, everybody. If you've been following along, you know that I tend to review cheaper gear, specifically cheap electric guitars. A quick history lesson about my channel. I started my channel in October of 2021. I didn't post any videos until February 13th of 2022. My first review was an Eastman Pacific Coast Highway 2 acoustic guitar. I posted a handful of videos every month. At the time, I was buying and selling guitars and other audio gear from Goodwill Auctions. I actually got quite a few good deals on some higher end gear and after a year of buying and selling, I actually broke even. So I got to mess around with a lot of cool gear, uh, basically for free. And then in November of 2023, uh, I finally, after nearly two years, hit the 1,000 subscriber mark and my channel uh, became monetized. And for the month of November, I made a whopping 74 cents. I was gigging quite a bit last year and each time I played out I made about a hundred bucks so running the YouTube channel certainly wasn't for the money. Then an interesting thing happened. Uh, because of the way YouTube works, once you hit a thousand uh, subscribers you've kind of proven your channel uh, is viable and they start pushing your content out. So my view rates and my subscriber rates actually went up exponentially from what it was. And then I learned another interesting lesson about YouTube audiences. They love drama. I often get criticized for using sort of the clickbait style titles on some of my videos, but if you don't grab people by their emotions, you won't get them to watch your content. Like my last video responding to that user's comments, uh, I think the title on that was, this guitar is literally a toy, it's a joke, and there was a picture of me holding the Yamaha Pacifica. Uh, the title was actually directly quoted uh, from uh, users comments on the Squire debut review that I did and so if I had named that uh, that last video you know I respond to a user's comments hardly anybody would have watched it uh, the view rate and the subscriber rate would have been pretty next to nothing so incidentally, that video is uh, about 48 hours old and it's already the third highest video in terms of views uh, that I've gotten. The subscriber rate on that video is actually really high and it's got the most comments out of any video that I've created. So that just goes to prove that the title is very important and if you don't have that hook and grab somebody, you're not gonna get their attention. And everybody kinda knows that you know, that YouTube and social media, that, you know, they're, they're these clickbait type titles, and that's what you need in order to get somebody to click on your material. And I'm not the only YouTuber that uh, knows this, and if you look at YouTube, most of the titles for videos are something that sort of grabs your attention. It's a visceral uh, title uh, designed to sort of create an emotional response in people. So you can complain about YouTube's algorithm being the problem, uh, but really it's the audience. Uh, there's an old adage in journalism that if it bleeds, it leads, and that means the most dramatic story and the most dramatic headline is going to be the one that gets read or gets watched. So really YouTube's algorithm is just responding to audiences' preferences. The more people like or comment on something, the more YouTube is gonna push it out. So then back in January of this year, uh, 2024, I made the mistake of posting some short content uh, about rock music trivia on my channel and it just, the content just exploded. Uh, so my channel basically got taken over by shorts because shorts audiences and long form audiences are two very different people. And so I was promoting the shorts and creating these shorts and it just kind of drove the long form viewers away from my channel. So that's why I spun off the guitar review uh, channel onto this one. Uh, and that said, the uh, old channel uh, is actually making money. It's called Rock and Replay. I have over 36,000 subscribers and I make between a thousand and two thousand dollars a month, which is what I use to buy the gear that I review for this channel. And if you watch my older videos, you can kind of see the progression 
Uh, I started out as Rum Runner Guitars because a buddy of mine and I, we were going to build some, try to build some cheap USA made guitars and maybe put them on the internet and try to sell them. That didn't really pan out, so I switched the channel to uh, Guitar Dungeon because I jokingly called this basement where I was doing uh, my, where I do my videos, uh, the dungeon. Um, it looks a little different than it did when I first started. I actually put some walls up and whatnot. Uh, so then I got a message from somebody, another YouTuber, uh, saying that their channel was called The Guitar Dungeon and they thought that people might get confused between the two, whatever. So I ended up changing the name of my channel to Jay Allen Music and incidentally that person changed the name of their channel so yeah thanks a lot. So now the channel is called Jay Allen Guitar because I want to focus on guitar reviews, recording guitar and eventually get back into the CNC guitar building tutorials. So as your channel grows you're bound to run into the trolls and people posting just negative and frankly ignorant comments. The best advice is to just ignore them but some comments that contain flat out inaccurate information need to be addressed. I rarely delete or block viewers unless they're simply posting offensive content which can get my channel banned. I think everyone is entitled uh, to their opinion but some people think that their opinion is the final word. How dare anyone contradict them? Uh, Glenn Fricker of Spectre Sound Studio has practically made a career out of reading and responding to viewer comments. I'm not nearly as charismatic or quick-witted as Glenn, so I'll leave that to the professionals. I really don't want my channel to simply become this grudge match between people that like inexpensive brands and people that swear by the name brands. My intention from the start of this channel is to simply share my love of guitar. But there seems to be this huge divide in the guitar community between people that buy and play cheap budget gear and people that are loyal to the big brands like Gibson Fender and PRS. In fact, there's a YouTuber, Kyle Bull, who posted an excellent video on the topic of gatekeepers, people that think they hold the key to whatever topic is being discussed, whether it's in a discussion group, a bowling league, or a social media page. They think that their opinion and the gear that they play is the only type that matters, and everything else is crap. I can't do the topic justice, so check out Kyle's video. He does an excellent job of explaining uh, what the gatekeepers are and has a very well thought out response to that type of attitude. Another thing I see is that there seems to be this belief that us YouTubers who are promoting these inexpensive brands are somehow getting rich. That somehow we're being given all these guitars for free and we make these videos glorifying these guitars and the company, what, gives us kickbacks or something and we don't tell honest truths so we don't give honest reviews about these guitars because you know we're being paid to say uh, all this stuff about how great these guitars are or we're just raking in the YouTube ad revenue and so we're just making all this money right so there are a ton of guitar reviewers on YouTube who talk about cheaper brands Glenn Fricker who I mentioned from Spectre Sound Studio often talks about affordable gear uh, Guitar Max is another one Josh Gomez uh, his channel straight out of the box that's an excellent channel. If you haven't had a chance to check it out, check it out. Uh, Average Joe's Gear Talk is another one. Philip McKnight also talks about inexpensive gear on occasion. Uh, and Steve Cassidy Guitar, he's a very fun uh, YouTuber to watch. And then Daryl Braun Guitar also talks about affordable guitars from time to time. And that's just to name a few. Some people think that all of these folks are just raking in the cash, pushing all these cheap guitars. Yet, YouTube community guidelines require us to disclose if we are paid to promote an item or given merchandise in exchange for a testimonial. If we don't disclose this information, our channel can get shut down. And also, many of the guitar manufacturers that send us gear to review either want it back after we're done reviewing it or they expect us to pay for it. So I really don't see that any of the YouTube creators reviewing guitars are getting rich. YouTube pays us about $6.50 per 1,000 views on long-form content. If we use Glenn Fricker as an example, he has over half a million subscribers. His average monthly views are around 800,000. Uh, with an RPM of $6.50, uh, that's what my Rock and Replay channel makes on long-form content. That's basically $6.50 for every 1,000 views that YouTube will pay you in ad revenue. So if you use those numbers, Glenn is potentially making about $5,500 a month, which is around $66,000 a year. 
that's not a terrible living, but certainly not six figures, certainly not as much as, say, the CEO of Gibson, who makes an estimated $200,000 a year, while their plant workers make $18 or less an hour. And rip on Japanese manufacturers all you want, but Gibson also closed their Kalamazoo plant here in Michigan and moved the operation south to save money. So no, those people aren't the problem. The problem is rich YouTubers pushing cheap crap off on an unsuspecting public. Paul Reed Smith, who again in a recent presentation went on and on about tone woods and about his new tuning keys being so much better for tone. No, he's not the problem. Jace Allen's the problem because he said Squire debut was a decent guitar. No, rather budget guitar buyers are the problem because they'd rather buy 10 cheap guitars for $150 each than one or two good guitars for a couple thousand each. The disconnect between people's beliefs and opinions and actual reality is sometimes staggering. The ones that seem to be the most bent out of shape are the ones who own and buy expensive name brand guitars. Kyle Bull calls them elites. And they seem to get so offended by someone like me talking about how much I like the Firefly Strat style guitar that I got for less than $200. It's like it short circuits their brains or something. They have to defend their purchase and justify the outrageous price they paid for their custom shop Stratocaster, so shitting on people that buy affordable gear seems to be the way to do it. Or they simply rip on your playing ability or the condition of your studio. And of course, that's not to say that all people that buy expensive guitars or can afford expensive guitars or are loyal to name brand guitars are the ones ripping on the people that uh, are loyal to the cheaper brands. Even within the cheap guitar community, as you saw if you watched uh, the, vid the last video I did uh, responding to that user comment, you know, I had paid $100. $20 for the Squire debut and thought it was just fine guitar and this person was basically saying that no 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 the Yamaha Pacifica which is only $100 more is so much better. So there's degrees of this elitism that Kyle Bull talks about in his outstanding video. So make no mistake I don't have a problem with brand name guitars. I don't have a problem with somebody spending thousands of dollars on guitars if they want. If they want to go out and spend all that money on the new Gibson double neck Jimmy Page uh, guitar, fine. I, I don't have a problem with that. Uh, what I do have a problem with is people that are ripping on other people for their choices about buying a cheaper guitar or buying multiple cheap guitars uh, instead of one what they've considered decent guitar. And a lot of these people are complaining about these guitars have never even picked up one of these cheaper guitars. They just see that it's inexpensive and immediately assume that it's no good, which is not the case. So are these YouTubers who are talking about cheap guitars getting rich? I certainly hope so. I hope we all do. I hope we all make lots of money so we can give the middle finger to our corporate overlords and have some control over our own lives and make a living doing something that we're passionate about. I hope the budget guitar community just continues to grow and remain a thorn in the side of all those cork sniffing knuckleheads who think the guitars that we like are crap simply because of the name on the headstock or the price we paid for them. At the end of the day, the best guitar is the one you play and enjoy playing. I really appreciate everybody who has supported this channel over the last several months after I changed uh, to this new channel. Uh, I appreciate a lot of the positive comments. Granted, the negative comments are sort of few and far between, but they have a tendency to stand out, especially when they contain all these inaccuracies and insinuations that somehow us YouTubers are getting rich simply by talking about a cheap guitar. So anyway, uh, I don't want to turn this into a, you know, a channel that's just going to beef about things or beef about people or complain about things. I just wanted to address this sort of one last time and get this out of the way and kind of clear the air and get back to talking about guitars. I got another guitar I want to review here that I just kind of bought off Amazon. I don't, don't even know what brand it is. So I appreciate the people that are tuning in and uh, contributing to the conversation. Uh, and, and being respectful and even even if you're critical I don't mind people being critical if I'm wrong about something I'll be the first to admit it uh, it's just that I don't like the sort of the bully mentality that some people have where they just you know want to beat their their opinion over your head so again uh, thanks everybody for tuning in and uh, we'll see you next time here on Jay Allen Guitar